let's start there. Let's understand a little bit just the background of the prosperity gospel and how it understands worship and singing uh, in, in its context. In contemporary Christianity, the challenge of maintaining doctrinal purity is ever present, particularly in the face of movements that distort or dilute biblical truths. One significant voice in this ongoing battle is Costi Hinn, who has emerged as a vocal critic of the Word of Faith movement. This movement, often associated with the prosperity gospel, presents a theology that diverges sharply from Orthodox Christian doctrine, emphasizing health, wealth, and success as guaranteed rewards for faith. Costi Hinn's critiques are particularly valuable in understanding how to navigate these challenges and uphold the integrity of the gospel. One of the critical areas Hinn focuses on is the heretical Christology often embedded in the music produced by the Word of Faith movement. Music plays a crucial role in shaping the theological understanding of believers, and when it conveys a distorted image of Christ, it can lead to significant spiritual confusion. The Word of Faith movement often portrays Christ more as a means to an end, emphasizing his role in providing personal blessings rather than his call to repentance and holiness. This portrayal can shift the focus of worship from God to self, undermining the core message of the gospel that calls for self-denial and wholehearted devotion to God. Hinn's efforts to expose these heretical elements involve a careful analysis of the lyrics and teachings promoted in this music. He urges church leaders and worship teams to scrutinize the content they endorse and ensure that it aligns with sound doctrine. This vigilance is essential because music with its emotional and spiritual influence, can reinforce beliefs more powerfully than many other forms of teaching. By promoting theologically sound music, churches can help their congregations maintain a correct understanding of Christ and his mission. Beyond music, Kosti Hinn also addresses the broader false teachings within the Word of Faith movement. Central to these teachings is the promise that faith will inevitably lead to physical health, material wealth, and personal success. This prosperity focused theology can lead believers to view their relationship with God transactionally, where faith is merely a tool to obtain blessing. Such a perspective is dangerously misleading, as it overlooks the biblical reality that believers are often called to endure suffering and trials for the sake of Christ. The greatest threats to Christians, conservative Christians, it's not the liberals. The greatest threat is from within. It's those who appear like they are sheep, but they're wolves. Hinn's critique of these teachings is rooted in a thorough understanding of Scripture. He points out that the Bible consistently teaches that following Christ involves taking up one's cross, experiencing persecution, and sometimes enduring hardship. The promises of health and wealth are not guaranteed in this life, but are part of the eternal hope that Christians look forward to in the life to come. By redirecting believers' focus from earthly prosperity to eternal truths, Hinn helps them develop a more robust and resilient faith. In response to the errors of the Word of Faith movement, Costi Hinn emphasizes the importance of sticking to biblical truths. He advocates for a return to the core teachings of the Bible, encouraging believers to ground their faith in Scripture rather than in the enticing promises of prosperity preachers. This emphasis on biblical literacy is crucial in an age where many believers are more familiar with popular Christian slogans than with the actual words of Scripture. However, they can also be used as tools for deception, and we often see that throughout the New Testament, where uh, in 2 Peter 2, verses 1 through 3, those first pivotal verses of what Peter is going to talk about for an entire chapter, which is false teachers, uh, as uncomfortable as this may seem, he says that there will be those who secretly introduce destructive heresies. That means they're gonna get in in what looks like the church. That means they're getting in where it sounds like the church. That means they're getting in where it even feels like the church, but it's not the church. Hinn's call to adhere to biblical truths involves both personal and communal aspects. On a personal level, believers are encouraged to engage in regular in-depth Bible study, allowing the Holy Spirit to illuminate the truths of God's word. On a communal level, Churches are urged to prioritize expository preaching and teaching that systematically unpacks the scriptures. This approach helps congregations develop a deep and nuanced understanding of the Bible, equipping them to discern and reject false teachings. Another critical aspect of Hinn's critique is his warning against endorsing theologically unsound music. In many churches, 
Worship music is a primary means of teaching and reinforcing theological concepts. When the music contains errors or promotes a prosperity-centered gospel, it can subtly shape the beliefs of the congregation. Hinn urges church leaders to carefully vet the music they use, ensuring it aligns with sound biblical doctrine. This warning is particularly relevant in an era where music from prominent Word of Faith ministries is widely popular. Hinn encourages believers to be discerning consumers of Christian music, choosing songs that accurately reflect the truths of the gospel. This discernment involves not only evaluating the lyrics for theological soundness, but also considering the overall message and focus of the music. By prioritizing theologically sound music, churches can help their congregations worship in spirit and truth, avoiding the pitfalls of prosperity theology. I'm going to kind of bear my soul here with you. Honest confession. I would know that there were certain things that were completely deceptive. Finally, Kosti Hinn addresses the rebranding of the prosperity gospel. Recognizing that overtly materialistic messages have faced significant backlash, many proponents of the prosperity gospel have adopted more subtle approaches. They may use language that sounds more orthodox while still promoting the same underlying principles of guaranteed health, wealth, and success. This rebranding can make the prosperity gospel more appealing and harder to detect, posing a significant challenge for discernment. Yeah, so the way that the prosperity gospel works is that if you believe in Jesus and you follow Jesus, that he is going to make you happy, healthy, and wealthy. The problem is it's just like a Ponzi scheme. Yeah. The only guy getting rich is the guy at the top. His but discussion of this rebranding emphasizes the need for ongoing vigilance among believers. He encourages Christians to look beyond the surface and critically evaluate the teachings they encounter, comparing them with the whole counsel of God. This critical evaluation is not just the responsibility of church leaders, but of every believer, as each person is called to be a discerning and mature follower of Christ. Maintaining doctrinal purity in the face of modern heresies is a challenging but essential task for the contemporary church. Kosti Hinn's critiques of the Word of Faith movement provide valuable insights into how believers can navigate these challenges. By exposing heretical Christology and music, criticizing false teachings, emphasizing adherence to biblical truths, warning about theologically unsound music, and discussing the rebranding of the prosperity gospel, Hinn equips believers to stand firm in their faith. The key to maintaining doctrinal purity lies in a deep and abiding commitment to Scripture combined with a discerning and vigilant approach to all teachings and influences. As believers ground themselves in the truth of God's word and seek to uphold the integrity of the gospel, they can effectively counter the distortions and falsehoods that threaten the church today. Through prayer, study, and community, Christians can ensure that their faith remains rooted in the unchanging truth of God's word, glorifying him in all they do.